straight to Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. It remains in a state of high alert, uh, despite the ceasefire that's been in place now since September the 5th. Locals report sporadic shelling across the city on Sunday, with several buildings catching fire after being hit. Kiev denies any part in the violence, while Moscow's been blaming mercenaries fighting alongside the army. And amid the simmering tensions and ongoing peace efforts by both sides, civilians are clinging to the hope that they can soon get their lives back on track, as Maria Fenoshina now reports. It's been a week since the official start of classes in eastern Ukraine, but not all schools have been able to open their doors. This school in central Donetsk was built back in 1935. It survived the Second World War, Nazi Germany bombardment, but was almost completely destroyed during what Kiev calls its large-scale anti-terror operation. When a school is hit, both sides are usually quick to claim they are not responsible, as they do not target residential areas. But these cases are all too frequent and many are deadly. At least three people were killed in Wednesday's shelling of one school in Donetsk, and many others could also be in danger. We are on the front line. It's very hard. Shelling never stops. The school was badly damaged. Constant artillery bombardment while we speak proves the principal's words. Jeanne says they had already repaired the school from a previous hit, but another shell brought even more destruction. I can't get used to it. I can't imagine how stressed the children are because of the constant bombardment. Repair works continue anyway. And while they get the school ready, they also prepare its basement, a key place for people to still feel safe. So we hear a bomb shelter. Every school here in the city of Donetsk has a basement like this. This is where children and teachers were hiding when shelling was going on. It is cold and not very spacious, but it may just be enough to save lives. We meet two old ladies. They used to live in a nearby district, but came here after their homes were destroyed by shells. They are bombarding us like dogs. It's not a war. It's like the extermination of a nation. And it was the potential danger or destruction that meant classes just couldn't start. After we spent months in basements, people want to get back to their normal life. People's hunger for a peaceful life is immense, but it seems that the war's appetite is just as big, and it is growing. Marie Fnoshnati in Donetsk, eastern Ukraine. And Maria is also keeping you up to date with events in East Ukraine via her Twitter feed. She's been keeping a very close watch on the fighting around Donetsk International Airport. In fact, that air hub, a major point of unrest in the region before the fragile truce, which was signed by Kiev and anti-government militias one month ago.